Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of How to Blender series. As you know, Blender 3.6 is now out, bringing some amazing improvements to UV system in general. So today is a great day to learn about Blender's UV unwrapping system and to see what has improved in that area. Yeah, what is this? Stop the cube size. Well, let us spawn. A cylinder. It will be our text subject for this case. So first thing you want to do is go to the UV editing tab. There you already have everything set up so you do not need to manually just open the windows. So first you want to go to the UV editing tab. And let me explain to you what UV unwrapping is. It is basically a process used to cut your 3D object, which is this cylinder in our case, into 2D pieces, which are then laid flat on the surface of the texture. You can see these are those pieces, and underneath them is a so-called texture. Now, we do not have anything, so we need to add a texture. So here, we have two options. We have the option open, which will then let you select the files, AdWords textures from your PC, or you can click on new, and here we can add an image. So we can generate a blank type, UV grid or color grid. And we can also change the resolution of it. In other words, the width and the height. So one, now it is currently on 1K. So this is a 1K texture. You can manually increase it. Or a good way to do it quickly is to just click and hold over both of these textures. Then you can add the little star icon which will mean multiply, and you can multiply it how many times you want. For a 2K texture, you can multiply it by 2. Or for 4K texture, what I will do in this case is I will multiply it by 4. Press enter. I will name it test1. And then let us generate a color grid. You will later see why. And then once you've done, you can press OK. And see now below it, we have a texture. But as you can see, the texture is now displayed on our cylinder. You first need to enable some more things. First one is you want to scroll up here and go to the material preview. Clicking this will make a material. But the reason why still we cannot see our texture is because this cylinder has not a material assigned. So with the cylinder, we want to go to the shading tab and then click on the cylinder and click on a new button. We are presented with the general texture and material output. So you want to go here to add, search, image, texture. Or a shortcut to add is Shift A. The same thing. And now we want to plug color into color. And we want to select the test or however you named it. And now you can see. This is our texture right here. Let us go back into the UV editing and you can see this. But you cannot see the islands anymore. Well, we have two options to choose from. So this is called UV sync selection. When enabled, we can see our islands here and our objects here. So when I select the vertices here, I will able to see which vertices they are in our 3D space. In other words, the vertices, the selection is synchronized. When I disable it, I need to select the object I'm currently working on to see the vertices, and then we can separately select them, but only if the object in 3D space is selected itself. And so think of these islands and the UV map as a blueprint that determines the placement of the textures on the object. And we can control the placements of the texture however we see fit. And other useful options we can also enable is under the overlay tab here. One useful option is to display stretching. You can see now, when we turn that on, you can see that our islands are blue. This dark blue color indicates that we do not have any stretching. Or the stretching is like minimal for this object. Let me just display some stretch. Okay, so you can see what it is. Let's synchronize this. 
And you can see now this vertex is selected here. And when I drag it, the light blue color is indicates that there is little stretching. And when I drag it, it gets to the green, yellow, at some part it will get to the orange and maybe even red. You can see down here it is orange, so like here. And you can see how stretching looks like in action. And believe me, you do not want that on your model. The goal when unwrapping is to have an unwrap without much stretching. And you want your textures, otherwise islands, to have an optimized resolution, which of course improves quality, without wasting much texture space. And into that option on how to do that as you should, we'll get in a bit later. So let us try to unwrap our first object. Okay, let's delay this object and we'll start by unwrapping a torus, because why not? You can see now I brought in a torus, but we also need to put the shading on, just like this. And you can see the textures are a bit stretched on this one, which is exactly what we want, because we are going to manually unwrap it for it to look as it should. You can see how it looks like in the viewport. Okay, it is blue, but that doesn't mean in this case that it is good. Think of UVs as an aluminum foil around the cheese. In this case, the torus is our cheese. First thing we want to do is mark the parts where our torus is going to be cut. In other words, mark so-called seams. So you want to select the loop cut, in other words, the edge where you want to mark your seam. Mark the spot where the torus is going to be cut. Think of it as a t-shirt. When the t-shirt is on the body, it covers the body from all sides. Basically, t-shirt is then a 3D object. And when we cut its sides, a late on the table, then we have two parts of the t-shirt, front part and the back part, or in this case, islands, that are not stretching or curving on the sides. And unless you are a tailor, I have no idea why would you want to do that to your t-shirt. I mean, yes. Keep your t-shirts clean and nice. Okay. When selected this part, you want to press UV, <laughs> U on your keyboard. And here you have the option mark seam. You can see now I have a line here. And let us just unwrap to see what we will get. So let me select the object, press U. And up here we have the option to unwrap. And you can see this changes and this also changes. But when I zoom in here, you can see that islands are not at the same size. You want your islands to be roughly the same size. Otherwise, the smaller the grid, otherwise the texture, it means it is a high resolution. This is very low, low resolution compared to this part. Which means our torus is not unwrapped yet. So what I want to do is also select a loop cut here, for example. Mark seam. L. U and unwrap it like this and now okay it is rotated the good thing is we can also edit the rotation up here so i can select this and just rotate it and of course you want to scale it you do not want your textures to go outside of the box okay it's upside down so i just rotate it like this and you can see now we have a pretty nice unwrap Yes. And this is what you always want to get. So you want to cut it as many times as you should. So it's no longer circular or you can see what happens. And some other cool options under the Overlays tab also include the grid. You can have the dynamic, fixed or pixel grid. But if you're wondering why it's not working, it's because you need to enable the over image. Now, you have the dynamic grid, you can see how it looks like. You have the fixed gear, and you can just change the size here. Let me just get it back to 10. And then you have also pixel. It's pretty nice if you're like calculating where you want to put your islands, especially when you have a texture which does not have the grids like this. Let's just try putting a texture on this torus. I know a great one. See you in a minute. And we are back! Okay, 
I'm back, and now we have a terrible cheese texture on our torus. And yes, this is a good example why every texture you find is not a good enough texture. And now let us see the new features and improvements that are in the Blender version 3.6. So with that version came some of the new simulation nodes and other things were improved, but the one I mainly focused on is the performance on large, organic and complex meshes has been greatly improved. And not just that, but the pack ions option now offers a great deal of correct customization. So let us just grab another object right here. I have a throne I have made in a previous Blender version. I use the same options as we are going to use now. And I still wasn't happy with the result, so I even placed some of the ions manually. Let me just append my throne real quick. And here we are with the throne. Let me just remove my TG's texture and set it back to the test one grid. Okay, and this is how my unwrap looks like. The pack islands option and the option we are just going to use to improve this layout, in other words, minimize the wasted space, is located here under UV. So before packing islands, you also want to average island scales. You can do that by selecting everything, UV, and of course, then selecting the option. You can see it changes scaling a bit, and it's pretty useful. And then we want to go to the pack islands option, which has been drastically improved. And also we have some new options. Now, finally, the pack islands also can can pack exact shape, other words, concave islands, which is also good when you have concave islands and holes in your meshes. In other words, concave islands are those that are like shaped and their shape curves inwards. So it is pretty useful to have those. You also have these boxes for scale and rotation. And it will just allow Blender to scale and rotate your islands to improve the layout how it sees fit. And then you have the rotation method. In other words, this is used to limit the rotation and it will allow Blender to just rotate however it sees fit. You also have axis aligned, so it will just rotate it either horizontally or vertically. And the cardinal one will only allow for the rotation of 90 degrees. I will just put it on any. And then you have the margin. Margin is basically minimal distance between each island and also the distance between the islands and the bounds of the texture. In other words, these, these little distances between the islands. When there is non-margin, the islands will overlap. In other words, they will share the same texture space, which in most cases isn't good. The only time you want to have overlapping islands is when you know they are going to be using the same part of the texture. In other words, if the texture repeats itself. And here we also have the option merge overlapping, which will mean that overlapping islands will stick together during the pack islands option. So when I take that, it will not just it will not touch those islands. So of course we also have the margin methods. The first one I would take a look is add. So add just places each new UV island in the available space without looking at the size of other islands. Unlike scaled, which will take into account the scale of already existing islands and other islands when positioning them correctly. A fraction is most precise method that will calculate the remaining UV space and take into account when distributing islands. So it might take a little longer, <laughs> probably like a few seconds longer than any other, but it is the most precise option. So let me just put that. I'll keep the margin at this part, but there are also options you can tweak. In other words, the exact numbers, which will like optimize your overlay even more. Then you have the options for pinned islands, which we do not have now. And the last option is pack to option. So the closest UDM will make them come as close together as they can which is the best option to use in this case. Active UDM is for when you have the grid UDMs. Let me just show you what grid UDMs are. It's basically, you have, this is a single grid UDM. 
there are options which you can do to make another UDM like here and make another one above it and you can have many of those in each one of them can be a different texture even though they can all go onto the same objects and it's pretty cool okay let me just erase this i should stop drawing on my viewport I'm just like a little kid doodling everywhere where i can okay this this okay let us go back into back island and the active udm if you are having the grid udms it will basically pack where your 2d cursor is this little thing right here or on the active udm tile and the other option is the original bounding box so i'll put this on the closest let's see what it does you can see here it's calculating and bam we have a result like this and it's much better we pack you can see here that no space is wasted like here for example in an earlier version just remove this it will leave this space open and it will put, put this island like somewhere else you can see it really does a good job maximizing everything and you can see here this mesh has a hole and it actually grabs some of the parts and fit them all in here pretty amazing isn't it like i'm also so excited about this update been waiting for the improved package system for a while they did a really good job for sure and some other changes also include the new version of uv sphere project and cylinder project which means they will now take into account your placed seams okay let me just grab a cylinder go into edit mode with it and so i will just select it press u and cylinder projection and then here you have like different options from which direction you want to project let us just align to object and let me add some seams it should take them into account when doing anything so you mark seam like this part here you mark seam and then let us project the cylinder and when i click on preserve seams you can see it makes difference here you can see it basically cuts the mesh and it's a pretty neat option of course and the same one goes for spheres and also i told you there is one other way you can unwrap and it's a pretty useful one when you have complex objects and you don't want to spend time to manually put seams everywhere let me just did it just delete my throne okay so let me just add an isosphere go to edit mode and you can also use the smart uv project in other words you can define the angle margin method and it automatically unwrap it for you you can see here it did a pretty good job and that is also one way on unwrapping and i hope you learned something new in this video if you did please share subscribe like it does help me make more videos for you i want to thank you all see you in the next one bye bye <music>